Hello, everyone, and welcome to 2022. Or if you're listening years in the future, disregard that. Welcome to Comedians Conquering Climate Change. This is a podcast where we talk shop on climate change and clean energy with comedians because we love alliteration. I don't know if you saw this. Uh, We just got voted the best podcast with four C alliterative letters. Take that, children calling cats crayons. Today, we're talking solar power. We're talking headlines. We're talking congressional hearings. And we're doing it all with Josh Burstein, our special guest. Josh, do you want to say hello? Hello, hello. Uh, I recently just did the podcast Cheetahs Chasing Clown Cars, and uh, I'm glad to be here at the top. Oh, the key. Welcome to the top, Josh. We're doing this. We're conquering climate change. This is Comedians Conquering Climate Change, a project of the nonprofit Generation 180. Let's get into it. How was the Cheetah Show? Was it good? Was it quick? It went pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we lost some good clown shoes back there. Ah. A lot of squeaking. <laughs> a lot of death squeaks. Let's get into some headlines. A new study, this really huge comprehensive study, talked to Americans all over the map, all over that map of the U.S., all over political spectrums, and they found some pretty interesting thoughts. Here's one of them. 52% of Americans so they would support a small fee on carbon to combat climate change. Yeah, that's like a small resort fee to stay on Earth. I feel pretty good about tipping Mother Nature for all she's done. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mother Nature. And we're throwing some money in that tip jar. When I see that picture of the giving tree with its hand out, that is for a tip. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense to me. Yeah, giving tree is generous, but also appreciative if you tip it. You know what I mean? Money's not made on trees. Trees need dollars too. Yeah, trees need money. What an insult to give back a tree small pieces of former tree. Noodle on that. Yeah. (laughs) So 52%, I'm going to be honest, Josh, um, when I first saw that, I was like, that's not good. This feels, it's like a small fee on carbon. But then I thought 52% of all Americans. Nobody wants to pay more for anything. So... (laughs) I feel yeah. like a majority is is pretty good. The majority of any totally. The majority of anything is a huge deal. It's a very divided country. Yeah, if you if you ask people who here is uh pro cancer, you'd still get some people <laughs> jumping in with that. Yeah. You know, I like impossible negatives, like keeping the earth around, but still people have their priorities, like, you know, quarterly returns. Yeah, we can't all have Tom Hanks approval ratings. Uh, When it comes to influencing views on climate change in the study, they were like, yo, Americans, who do you listen to? And they said scientists, right, scientists talking about climate change and things like that. But they said recent extreme weather events, right? These things have really shaped uh, the urgency that people feel around climate change. Things like hurricanes and droughts and floods and unusual heat and wildfires. Those are having the greatest influence on their views. Yeah, I mean, this is why, you know, there's a lot of branding issues with this movement and global warming. But the one that I really like to stick with now is temperature weirding. <laughs> it's 80 and then it's snowing. And then there's a tornado. It's, it's a relentless thing. So temperature weirding. See if it, yeah. you know, catches on. Yeah, I, I, I am sort of discouraged that human nature is like, I'll believe a thing is real when I see it. Right. Like I'll believe climate change Mm -hmm. when my house is underwater. Part of me is like, what if and this is a crazy idea. We thought and anticipated uh, the future. We're empathetic to other people who are going through difficult situations. But I don't know. I feel like my mom told me not to touch the stove when I was younger. And the only way that I learned was I touched it. And I burnt my hand. Oh, I'm stubborn. I'm still going to keep touching that stove for (laughs) sure. Just to prove a point. You know I'm allergic to apples. I'm still going to eat an apple every once in a while just to show my mouth who's boss. All right, let's go to another headline. Executives at some of the world's biggest oil and gas companies. We're talking ExxonMobil, Chevron, BP, and Shell. They appeared before a congressional committee late last year to address, like publicly on the record, address accusations that the industry spent millions of dollars to wage a decades-long disinformation campaign to cast doubt on the science of climate change. That's a, what's like a what's a thing you've been accused of, Josh? Like I feel like I've been accused of like like you not washing dishes by my mom. I can't think of any uh, 
damning accusation like that that is clear uh clearly something they've done <laughs> but now they're spending millions on participation trophies and super bowl ads to be like look at all the great things we've done with our uh, you know yeah we, we we spent 40 dollars to make uh you know an actual impact and then we'll spend 40 million on uh, advertising it they like the ceos stuck to their scripts they said, you know, yeah. vaguely, they literally said vaguely that they've never engaged in campaigns to mislead the public, but also winked after they said it, which to me is a sign. Mm. They mouthed, not really. Well, you know, exacerbating this issue over a couple decades really has been great for stockholders, which is the priority. It is bad for air breathers, but <laughs> them stocks, though. Oh, them stocks. Them stocks. Look good. And then they have to pay a little money on the back end. That's like pretty good deal, you know, yeah. for, for messing up the earth for a couple extra decades. Yeah, you can just breathe clean air through the money that you've made. Joe Manchin, we've talked about this. People are talking about this. Finally, it's getting a lot of attention. He is under scrutiny following his opposition to sweeping climate bills. He's got holdings valued between $1 million and $5 million in Enter Systems. That's a coal brokerage business that he founded. That's right, he's the founder of a coal brokerage company, and he's negotiating climate change. Here's here, Let me give you, like, just put it in the starkest examples. Last year, he made $491,000 from his holdings in that coal brokerage firm, um, and he made 174000 from the Senate. Jimmy Carter sold his peanut farm. The most lucrative of all the nuts. I mean, that nut butter game probably would have diversified. He'd probably be getting into the jams now, marrying oh. berries, just like hit that acai tip of like 2010. Just the whole wave would have been Carter. Billionaire Jimmy Carter's acai bowls, but he had to sell his peanut farm. <laughs> and here we have Joe Manchin. Manchin Gun Kelly, real gangster. <laughs> Of the Senate. Also, don't worry, uh, Joe Manchin is the chairman of the Senate's Energy and Natural Resources Committee. Wow. But Josh, this uh, this podcast is about hope. And so into the next section, we're going to talk about solar panels. We're going to talk about hope. We're going to talk about good things. And we are not even going to say the words Joe Manchin. So get him out of your system now. No. Manchin, Manchin, Manchin. That, that's our Voldemort for the rest of the episode. I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, you know, listen, that is great. I like me some solar. We just got people out there selling sunshine. Uh, I, in fact, uh, more street cred, have installed my own solar panel on a roof once. Unbelievable. Josh, I am at this point threatened that you are actually conquering climate change and this isn't like a joke title. Yes. You've actually done it. As an Asian Jew, I'm the Genghis Cohen of conquering <laughs> your podcast. I'm here to usurp you and take over your show. <laughs> so welcome, right. guys. This All podcast right. has been no. brought to you by Generation 180. We'll uh, have a break after this with a track off of Sting's new album. How dare you? We'll be back to the podcast. You know what? What Josh said. <laughs> So, Josh, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to give you a fact. I'm going to give you a metric around solar panel. And I'm going to tell you hot or cold, right? Because a lot of solar panels, ooh, they can help that temperature weirding things. Let's start with the first one. How much do you believe that adding solar panels to a home can increase the home's value by? How many thousands of dollars? Ooh. You put solar panels on a home, the home is increased. What is the average number that that is benefiting? Would you say? Well, I would say it must be more than the cost of it itself, which sounds like a sound investment. So <laughs> let's let's assume eighteen thousand dollars. Ooh, you are extraordinarily close. Um, hmm. It is fourteen thousand dollars. Actually, fourteen thousand three hundred and twenty nine dollars hmm. is the average that a home is increased with solar panels. That's good. You're I was good. right because uh, inflation oh, and reverse. I'm selling this proverbial house in 2040. Of course. It's inflation. And it's in also Wisconsin supply chain. it's more protected from climate of course. disaster. You know, Josh, now that we've ran those numbers, you got it exactly right. Okay. Um, how many households do you think have already have gone solar? How many households right now in the U.S. These, are, right, these aren't businesses. These are like houses hmm. for families. 
have solar panels on them. Is this a percentage or is this a... No, let's do a number. Let's do a straight number. I feel like 800,000 people have gotten the memo already. Wow. Early adopters. You are, um, I mean, you're you're not that close, but at the same time, I still feel like that's a good guess. It's 1.5 million people have put solar panels on their home. That's pretty good, yes. huh? 1.5 geniuses. Okay, how many homes do you think have solar power potential? That means they have enough unshaded area for solar panels, and this is blank out of every five U.S. homes. How many mm. blank out of every five U.S. homes have Unshaded areas, it can totally work. They're getting enough sun to have solar power potential. Well, 75% feels like a three out of four thing. Ooh, um, it is four out of every five, which if I'm running the numbers is That's just 80%. one off. That's just you, one off on each yeah. fraction. Isn't that wild? 80% of homes, four out of yeah, every five excellent. homes. Yeah, right now, right now. There's 1.5 million geniuses and there could be more. Side hustles. People like passive income. And this is passive income for the betterment of the world. That's a good deal. Good deal. Yeah. So much deal. So much deal? The amount of deal is pretty so much. Um, Top-notch deal. Yeah. yeah, we're talking passive income that passively helps protect the planet. Okay, so net metering, which we're talking about, you generate electricity, you sell it back to the grid, receive payment. How many states, this is the last one, how many states mm. in our United States of America mm. have these laws, net metering, so you can actually make money um, by giving back to the grid? Okay, well, 51 total states carry the number of crappy governors <laughs> divided by 26. Dude, you know what? People mm. are good because it's 41 states and wow. the District of Columbia. That includes- Can't complain with so much deal. They get it. That's so good. much deal. So much deal. That's all right. I'll chant by myself. Um, that I is... figured everyone on the pod who's listening still <laughs> would be chanting with you, so I didn't need to jump in. But. I appreciate that. And I'm 100% convinced that you're right. Josh, we did it. Uh, we loved- having you on the show. We talked about a lot. There is, I'm nostalgic for this moment already, uh, but we're, this podcast is supposed to be quick, it's supposed to be high energy, so we're busy. Um, five words or less. You can show them on your fingers. Um, what are things you learned? What are mm. things you're going to take away? Buy solar, not dinosaur juice. So good. In fact, I'm getting that as a tattoo. You heard it here first. Hold me to this, comedians conquering climate change heads. I don't. We needed a name for our audience, but I'm gonna do this. Um, hey Josh, here's here's the thing. There are so many tools. You know this for looking at solar power on your roof. In the show notes, we've got a link to energysage.com. That's energy s a g e dot com. It's a great website that helps you estimate your roof's solar savings potential. It gets easy to understand information. Uh, more importantly, it like gives you competing quotes from solar companies so you can go from idea to solar and actually see the numbers on this. And ring in a new age of energy because it is Energy's Age at energiesage.com. Or Ener E Sage Sage? I think when people get informed about solar, they are more excited to do solar stuff. Uh, Josh, you installed the solar panel. What was that like? Was it inspire yeah. the people? Well, did you sure. did you have a good time? You, you, you put on a hard hat, you hop on a roof. Uh, it was kind of a Habitat for Humanity type build where, you know, I'm not, I don't know how to mess with a photovoltaic panel, but just like putting up siding or anything else, you, you install it on the roof and, and plug it on in and, and then it gets going. It's, it's uh, a technology that is getting better, getting more efficient, getting more clearly affordable which is fantastic so it was a fun outing with a group of friends um helped out a a community that was in need of solar and i love it i think it's a fun outing top-notch hinge date i think people should really (laughs) consider you know trying to win over people's affection by uh saving the earth it's it's a good wow find a a partnership with mother earth and the mother of your future children yeah it's getting hot in here 
So let's install solar panels. I am getting so hot. I'm actually nervous. Is this in direct um, conflict of interest, though, with your other side gig of styling shade when I see you <laughs> in the Joshua Tree? Or Listen, the people of the podcast don't need to know about my shade business. This has been Comedians Conquering Climate Change, a project of Generation 180. The world is a stage and we are trying to save it. Generation 180 is a clean energy nonprofit inspiring and equipping people to take action on clean energy. You can find out more at generation180.org. This podcast is produced and edited by Matt Turner. Our special thanks to our special guest, Josh Burstein. Josh, where can the people find you at? Where can they learn more about you? Where can they see your shows? Uh, I would recommend following me on all the socials at jburst uh, and Instagram at jburstofa. Uh, we got a new show called Tomorrow Today coming out, and the first episode is about the future of climate. So unbelievable! That seems like a good start. Perfect. My name is Esteban Gast. You can find me at Real Esteban Gast. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time. This has been Comedians Conquering Climate Change, a project of Generation One Hundred and Eighty.